Hi, I'm Jack Barron. Welcome to Travels with Jack. Today, I am very lucky to have for our guests to share their vacation and actually was more of an educational trip with you, uh, Tom and Mary Ann Sanicandro. Tom is an attorney in the Metro West area. Uh, he is also a state representative for Framingham and Ashland. And his lovely wife, Mary Ann, is a real estate agent, also in the Metro West area. But like all real estate agents, if you want to look at it anywhere within <laughs> <laughs> 1,000 miles, she's ready. <laughs> um, they recently took a trip. Uh, from Boston to New York, to Frankfurt, Germany, to Singapore, with a final destination of Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. And uh, I'm going to ask them to tell you a little bit about the trip. And we've got some pictures to share with you. And why don't you folks start and tell everybody uh, how you got there. Tell them about the reason you went. And we'll ask some other questions. Well, what? I was. I met up with some folks that were doing some disability policy work, and um, the United Nations is requiring member countries to comply with their convention, which is the rights of people with disabilities. So I had met these, this person that was doing work there and been working there for a year, and they were in the process of writing their law. And we went to Bangladesh to to try to influence the law to make sure that people with disabilities were taken care of and had the civil rights that that. You know, we think is important. Let Marianne tell you a little bit about how we got there and the, the trip over. Yeah. It was an awesome trip. Our oldest son has Down syndrome, and um, oh, so disabilities was an issue for you. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you didn't yeah. share yeah. that yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. From, I guess we um, held back. <laughs> he's, he's 26 now, and so from the time he was born, we've been involved advocating for people with. Um, disabilities and intellectual disabilities. Um, I had started a support group for families of um, people that had Down syndrome generally, um, parents of, Metro West parents of children with Down syndrome group, and um, which is still active today. I'm very proud of that. Started it when Dave was three years old, so it's been in existence for over 20 years. And then a little later, a social, um, a group for young um, teenagers that had disabilities so that they would interact with people without disabilities and um, just be a so group where they you, could have fun. When you met with these legislators in Bangladesh to help formulate this disability laws for that country, you had real life experience with this. Exactly. Okay. And you told me you stayed with people. Uh, you had an intern from Harvard who actually invited you there. You stayed with him. Tell the folks a little bit about <laughs> staying with him. And well, I'll tell. I'll lead up to how we ended up staying there. We initially were going to stay in a uh, in a hotel um, because it, it's really hot there. It's probably 98 <laughs> degrees and very humid. So we landed in Dhaka. It was about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And this was in May. So in May, it was May, May 4th. I, yeah, May 4th we landed. Um, we got this um, beat up van. We drove on the highway to Dhaka. We got to the <laughs> hotel we were going to stay at and it looked like it was an area that had been bombed or something. This, the street was open. There were no street lights. We walked into the building. They were in the middle of a power outage when we came into the building. So it was just a terrible place. They brought us up to the room. They turned the generator on when we got there. They brought us up to the room. The room had a light like, bulb. When I turned to look at Marianne, she said, I'm not staying here. <laughs> so uh, after a few false starts, we decided to just stay with the intern. He had a lot of room because he was he ran a big place for the interns that were coming in later in the summer. He's young. He's 24. He said that if you wanted to be more comfortable, if you wanted um, air conditioning and a chair, you should stay in the hotel. So I opted for the chair and the air conditioning. <laughs> But, but when we got to the hotel, the power went out. There was no air conditioning, and I really didn't see a chair anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but he spoke English and Bangla, and we felt we would be more comfortable um, being with him. Now, give us a little bit of history. You mentioned that uh, Bangladesh was part of Pakistan. Share with the audience, if you would, a little bit of the history of how it broke apart. I thought that was interesting. Right. It was originally um, part of Pakistan. Um, it was broken into, I think they called it East Pakistan and West Pakistan. Um, 
with uh, what happened in 1971, which is I think most people who are watching will remember is the, the revolution that happened in Bangladesh and the famine and the, and the problem that followed after that. In 1971, both countries, Pakistan and Bangladesh, were a single country. And both countries elected a single prime minister who actually came from the Bangladesh side. The people in Pakistan then didn't want to um, acknowledge that, and there was a break between the two countries. Um, and when there was a break between the two countries, there was a revolution in Bangladesh, um, but Bangladesh wasn't able to support itself at the time, and that's what people were that's concerned about. That's why they about. found the Beatles and that, raised Right, money. exactly, right. But, because it was, there was just such huge poverty at that time. And, and I th the, in one of the conversations I had with a member of parliament, I think they were able to feed they, only a quarter of their population on what they were really? growing in Bangladesh at the time. Now they're able to feed about their whole population with what they grow there. So they're in a much better situation. The, the other thing, too, which I think is amazing, is their economy has been growing 5 to 6% for the last 11 years. So wow. their economy is booming right now. I know they are one of the largest um, garment yep. manufacturers exactly. in the world. And I know currently there's issues with the labor feels they're being very much underpaid compared to world standards. I won't get into it, but as a politician, I'm sure you are always looking at issues where there is unfair labor, et cetera, and I know uh, that has been currently a big issue where they feel they're underpaid. The, the, there's a whole lot of things that are happening. Um, one of the, the average uh, wage is a dollar a day in Bangladesh. So the, if you start from that criteria, also if you go, the, the cost of living there is obviously very low. Um, there's a lot of folks there's a lot of folks living in poverty, but there seem to be a, a growing middle class when we're there. Good. Uh, there's lots of apartments, and we were we spent a morning in the slums actually, and in the slums, the people looked healthy. You know, they, 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 we really didn't see people being unhealthy or starving. Um, it so seemed you were that there impressed was, with the general population there. Well, the people were very open to us, and. Um, and engaged and busy. They they were constantly doing something and there is a lot of people so <laughs> instead of tow trucks they seem to have if a car broke down they would just hire some people that were walking and they would and push the it. car and that push was it, cheaper yeah. than triple A and <laughs> that was think, interesting. Uh, I think for people to have an understanding it's the most densely populated country in the world. Um, the city we were in has a geographic area. I think it's a hundred square miles um, is so it's 10 by 10 is the city of Dhaka and there's 12 to 16 million people that live in Dhaka wow. and uh, 150 to 170 million people that live in the country which is they say it's as big as Iowa or something like oh, that. Wisconsin, really? so, yeah. So it's it's it, it's it's, it's gotta, crowded. It, yeah. It's crowded, and and to, um, you you understand what that's like when you're there, and you're uh, like once you're on the street, you there was a barrage of cars and people. It's just an amazing Yet experience. Yeah, you felt a warmth. I know you both mentioned to me you felt from the people they yeah. exuded a warmth and a and, and we, a charm, yeah. and were very friendly. And we never didn't feel safe. You know, it was it was very good. Yeah. I think one of the things is that, that um, one thing we stood out, they, they saw us and they like we would we would attract crowds. It was as if we were visiting royalty or something. <laughs> Absolutely. They, 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 a a they, Massachusetts yeah, yeah, rep, yeah. what could be more regal. <laughs> but they, they thought, well it wasn't me actually they were they were dealing with Marianne as well. She I was the big draw. Some, yeah, some let's, pictures you're gonna share with us. I don't know uh, oh, there we go. Tell this is what, in Frankfurt? This is in the airport at Frankfurt. Yes. Yeah, we, we actually it's a long trip. We were flying using frequent flyer miles. I thought we were actually going around the world the other way. When they told us we were going to Frankfurt, I said, you kidding me? So we had to stop in Frankfurt on the way to Singapore. So Yeah, we left Sunday around noon or 2 o'clock, and we arrived um, two Dhaka. days later, in, 11 o'clock at night in Dhaka. So that's it was a Singapore. Long trip. That, oh yes, Singapore is uh, that big building on the left with the top on it. That's a new casino they're just finishing in oh, Singapore. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were in Singapore for a day. We had a oh, little you, oh, all right. little hold over there for. Did a, you have a Singapore sling at the Raffles Hotel? On the um, on the plane. On the plane, actually, the plane. that's their signature drink. <laughs> yep. The planes were very nice. They. Um, this is. Um, <laughs> This is we we were we stayed in an apartment on the street. It was it was a reasonable area of the city, but it wasn't the greatest. But this is the guy <laughs> we brought up bought our breakfast from every morning. Okay. He uh, 
He sold eggs and everything else. Uh, they would, they loved us too. Everything, you know, if you took a picture, they were so happy. And um, but we would, we'd go up and buy breakfast, and you know, they'd they would, make the bread right there on the little grill. Yeah, I don't know if there's yeah, a picture of yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, was this your host? That's uh, actually one of the members of Parliament. He's oh. uh, he was the guy that actually headed up um, the climate change. Um, committee for the parliament for Bangladesh. He was when we had we had lunch with him, and he was explaining the the real issues they're having with global warming. They're losing a lot of their landmass already to global warming, and they also have an issue called salinization, where the since the the uh, water is rising, it pushes salt water up into the rivers, and it kills the rices, the rice paddies. Oh, really? So the, they're they're already dealing with the issues with global warming in Bangladesh. Fortunately, your constituents here aren't complaining yeah. about that. <laughs> no, no, I haven't heard about that one yet. <laughs> Maybe and we will. This now. is still <laughs> Singapore. That's actually from the roof of the apartment building we're staying in. If you can see the, well, you, that's that's Bang, that's the city oh. of Dhaka. So it's really okay. a, a modern-looking city yeah. in a lot of ways. And I think right. that's a soccer field midway, like from the roof where we were staying. There was like a little soccer field, football they call it, um, not too far away, like surrounded by those trees in the middle. And as hot as it was, like one day it was 109 degrees, and the humidity was like, I don't know, 100 percent or 150. Well, it's good skin cleansing yeah. weather. Yeah. And um, this is also from where you were staying. Yeah, it looks like it is. That's most. Uh, there's a lot of new construction and yes, a lot of new apartment new. building. Yeah. There were there was buildings going up all around the city, and I think most of those are apartment buildings. That are yeah, one can... in the foreground I think is being built now, and you can see on the top of it there's some bamboo, and there's bamboo that just stays there. And what they do is they put the scaffolding in to the forms to do the concrete to do the next level of Did you floor. find, did you ask them at all, are most of the buildings built by private builders or is it public housing? Did you? I would expect it's all private. The building we were in was private. The, I okay. think the most interesting part of it is their population is so huge. Yep. Manpower, manpower isn't the problem. So that a lot of times when we were at construction sites or near construction sites, they're mixing the concrete by hand outside the site, no yep. concrete mixer. And they put this in these huge bowls, and then they carry the bowls on their head up to the forms mm. to pour them into the forms. Really? So, so it's, it's, most everything is being done by hand out so there. So even though we're in 2010, it was 1920s right. uh, Hollywood movie construction. Right. And right. oftentimes it was transported um, for short periods. Well, actually, it could be long distances as well by rickshaw. They would put like this flat um, cart type thing on top of the back of a bicycle and they would move anything. many, many, anything, anything, okay? Um, did they the transport you? Did road. you two take a rickshaw at all, like a taxi or? Yeah, it, I thought it was more of a touristy kind of thing, but it's a mode of transportation that's used constantly. We were, we were on rickshaws every day, a couple of times a day. That was, it was. That was right outside the apartment yep. building. Those kids were just hanging out there, and we just <laughs> yep. took their picture. They loved getting their picture taken, and then with the digital camera, we were able to show them their picture right oh, away. Wow. And they that, really liked yeah, that an awful yeah. lot. That's great. That, that was a school bus. That was. Really? We went to see. We were doing. We were looking at um, the issues of special education there as well, and that was a special needs school. That was actually the kids that went to the school were from the slums themselves. And it was supported by private donations. Mm -hmm. So they gave these kids a, and this was one of the, we saw two schools. This was actually, I thought was the better of the schools. And this was for the poor kids. Those two things you see are actually the school buses that they get the kids to school in. And they're really and they're rickshaws. Bicycles. And it's a bicycle. Yes. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, the rickshaws are, they're run by bicycles. They don't, you wow. know, they don't run So I think um, about 10 kids, like with 10 or 12 kids, would be on that little bus. Low pollution. Yeah, no yeah. pollution, actually. Yeah. You know, and it was the exercise program as now, well. Now, tell me about the schools. Um, I know it's a predominantly Muslim country. That's right. Were the schools what they would call madrasas, or were they uh, religiously oriented, the, or were they more secular? I don't think the, the first, the two we saw in Dhaka were not. The first, the, the first one, the one that we just saw there was, um, was by privately 
funded by donations. Right. Okay, so basically a secular run school. It was right. just for people with um, special needs, and there wasn't like the idea of inclusion like we have it here. Okay. okay so we talked to them about that as well. Um, and these are some of the students. These are some of the students. That's they all wore the, a uniform. That was the. Oh, uh, they do wear uniform. That yeah. was a kid. For, that was the poor kids school though right. this okay. was they, they were doing sort of more cutting edge stuff and the kid the school for the poor kids in they talking the about uniforms did they mention to you they preferred the uniforms well, or some of these kids the i style? think didn't have is like it was lower income people okay yep. so it was nice that they were able to have a uniform to to all be the same i was going to say it probably um breaks apart the disparities mm. You know, and I think they, the, they gave them a lunch as well while they yeah, were there. Yeah, you see, because that's one of the slides the if you go through that. Meal they had, yeah. you know, a substantial meal during so the day. So, in other words, the food was this very. Is, this is, this is yeah. in that school, and this is where they were preparing their lunch yeah. for the kids. These two women, Our it was volunteers. just a tiny room uh, in the school, and they yeah. were preparing the lunch for the kids. Um, so, that's, you know, you can see that, that it's a very different way of living. And you, I'm sure, how did you find the food there? What did, what did you, anything in particular that you found? We thought it was great. Um, one thing that they don't use all that often is uh, forks and <laughs> utensils. <laughs> spoons, you utensils, and yeah. that was fine. And, okay. um, you know, they would often offer them to us because they felt we probably Being needed Westerners, them. Being Westerners, they But we, yeah. we kind of did whatever they did, and so we also ate with our hands, and lots of times you use the bread, and you kind of scoop up the rice, and you mix it all together, it's, and it was great. After a few days, I we remember forgot. one day I'm, <laughs> I'm eating with my hands, I'm thinking, I'm not even thinking about it yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, the, the food was very, very spicy, though. Every, every meal was very, very spicy. Well, <laughs> in <laughs> hot weather, it probably uh, yeah. helps you out a little bit. I like spicy, so I thought the food was great. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. This is at the school. And each, each of the school programs that we visited, they welcomed us um, and they would, you know, they would do a dance or like a song and show us some of the work that they were completing. And this, the, this, the, the school we're at, this was the better school. They, you can see the kids are working on the floor. Um, that's the way one, one room had desks, that room they were all working on the floor. It was really, it, it was really very crowded mm -hmm. can, compared to our standards. Yeah. I don't know how many how students was. there were in that school altogether, but they only had like um, one floor that they were. Yeah, there was like three classrooms or two classrooms yeah. on that floor. And there were like, there may have been 100 kids in the school. This is the this high looks court. beautiful. Oh, this is, I was going to say, yeah. it's a beautiful looking building. Yeah, yeah, and there's people with um, machine guns and. <laughs> oh, well, no, no, that had... was at the high court. That was the Capitol building where this... they, well, maybe they were there too, but I don't. Yeah. But the, the high court was a little bit of a, <laughs> a circus, if you will. Well. Um, we went there to meet with one of the members of parliament. We met with him at the high court because he was doing a trial or something. But um, it was the high court was quite an experience. But we, and then it, you know uh, they they run their their legal system is all in English because they were part of uh, their British colony being part of India. When at they one were point. part of India, right? Mm. So all their their legal system. And their their decisions are still written in English, and their trials are conducted in English. Um, there's some movement. Do they wear now. the wigs like the uh, Brits? Uh, they wore do? robes. The they lawyers, wore robes, the, yeah. the lawyers actually wore robes. So and that did was they separate them like in England, where you have solicitors versus barristers? barristers? Yeah. I didn't get that far into. Okay. I don't know if they All did right. or not. What was that? So you weren't looking we for employment to? while you were there? <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, uh, this these. Um, the, oh, this was the guy in the middle and uh, the woman next to him. That uh, he's a member of parliament as well, and that's his wife. And the guy to the far right was, I think, he was the ambassador from the European, European Union. Union. Oh, really? Um, okay. And we had dinner at his house with the American ambassador. Um, so you were able to meet the U.S. ambassador, really? Well, we went to college with the former ambassador, so he hooked us up with the... Uh, yeah, so we ended up oh, having yeah. an awful yeah. lot of um, yeah. Bangladesh connections. And there's a gentleman from our town as well, like um, Ashland, who is currently the ambassador to the United Nations from, from Bangladesh. From Bangladesh, Abdul Momen. He was a professor at Framingham State, now right. he's the ambassador oh, right. to the United Nations. And where is the ambassador from the United States from? Is he from Massachusetts? Or? Uh, I think he is. Yeah, he's... What's uh, he might be from the Worcester area. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Isn't yeah. that great? Yeah, yeah. And his father had been a state rep at one yeah, yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, the, the thing that was most interesting about that dinner party was that was the day we started in the slum. 
we had this dinner in the house in Dhaka, but it was same when we drove up, it was nighttime. The streets were all oh, yeah, rotted zoning. and everything. <laughs> and all of a sudden we took this little turn and there was a driveway. We went down the driveway and we could have been in Palm Beach, Florida at that point. Really? It there were stone up. walls, palm trees. The view was beautiful. I think they blocked most of the view with the stone wall so you didn't see it. You were kind of looking up at the, the wow. high rises. Yeah. Beautiful, huge house. We had this huge dinner waited on by servants, but it's, you know, there's a whole population that functions at the top level of society yeah. that doesn't necessarily mix. Right, right. Now, these are some students as well? I think this is his family. That was family. his house. And oh, this okay. is in Kushtia. Yeah, this is in Kushtia, which was um, five hours south of Dhaka. West. You know, I'm West. looking at yeah. the young boy's shirt, and it looks... Uh, very, you know, Tommy Bahamas, tropical-looking <laughs> shirt. Did, did they dress, it looks like they dress differently than India, per se. I haven't been to India. I don't know okay. what they dress yeah. like in no, India. Very colorful. Yes, the clothes look beautiful. Yeah, and there is a lot, you asked about the garment industry, and there is a lot of um, garment industry, industry going on, and that's partly why the um, electricity cycles to make sure in different segments of the city would be um, shut, were closed one day a week to help the electricity so they be enough, sew. be adequate for the other parts. And, um, you know, it was always like rolling, rolling electricity. Did you get a sense, um, this may seem awkward, did they seem to approach you looking for U.S. money grants or anything? A little, but a little not, bit. Not, okay. that, well, not for grants, for looking for, for money from us directly. Uh, some, not, not nearly as much as you would expect. Um, yeah, really only twice. Um, a couple of times, yeah. and only one that was very insistent. <laughs> I think the, uh, the, the other thing is that uh, you talked about the issue of safety, that it, you, you know, we felt so safe there, and I, you know, mm. there was no issues with anything like that. This was, we were... The tall guy there is the intern from um, the Harvard Law Project oh, okay. who set up the um, agenda for us, the itinerary, and, uh, you but, know, he... He's been there about eight months, and he speaks fluent Bangla, and, you know, we felt just great with him. He was able to navigate through this. The, the, the guy with the glasses sort of next to him is the guy who's, the blue shirt. Who's, who's family it was, and we, he brought us out. Part, we, we had a uh, luncheon at his house, and that's his dad. It's in the yeah. long robes. And oh, the, okay. The, yeah. Yeah. He and said his he, daughter. He was, said he was like, I think he said wife. he was 70 years old. Did you find they mostly That's his had mother large there too, families? with the with the yellow. Um, they they don't anymore. They did. They Population did. is a huge issue for them. Um, now they have s much smaller families. Yeah. Okay. Um, like he was one of well, kind of like us too. But he was one of how many did he have in his family? Like yeah. eight or yeah, eight or more. nine. So and he, he and he has three kids. And so, that's typical now that they have much smaller families. So you're seeing that they've shrink, shrinking the mm. size of the families and coming. But it's in. also they stay um, in proximity to one another. Like all his brothers and sisters lived within kind of not a oh, compound, nice, but actually. like nearby, yep. so that they. Um, yeah, Kushtia was a great. I loved Kushtia. It was a great. It was a town. Everybody was super friendly. It wasn't as it wasn't as intense as the city. Um, it was still really populated, but it, that, I, I liked Kushti a lot. Mm. No, that's, uh, the family just seems uh, wonderful who they took you in and, mm. and treated you. They don't you. see um, many tourists at all. <laughs> and, uh, now this know. is, I assume, out in the countryside. Well, this is when you leave the city of Dhaka. Um, when we left the city of Dhaka, I took a picture because when you initially leave the city, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of these stacks and they're making bricks in these stacks mm. oh. but the pollution was phenomenal Mo like leaving in one part of Dhaka when we left the city of Dhaka the whole sky was just black with the smoke um, because they don't have the same controls we have in pollution and you you, you know you hear that about developing nations and yep. you, even China they're saying well they're not competing in the same mm. level playing field I just took a picture just so that to, you know just to, to show people this is what they're doing there. They're, you know, that was a single smokestack, but I could have taken a picture if I was quick enough to show hundreds of them no, at the same true. time. No, it's true. A country like the United States probably has much more pollution controls than you would see in these uh, <clears throat> developing nations. I think they were burning coal to make the bricks. And this, this looks beautiful. This is where? 
It's Kushtia. This is an author's house. I'm not oh. sure of his name, but it was... Um, <laughs> Tagore. Tagore. T-A-G-O-R-E, I think it is. Yeah. And he was a poet and, I believe, an artist. And really? It looks very like a famous. beautiful setting. Yeah, it, it was beautiful. And you can see the, the trees are... The wind is blowing. It, it, there was There's a storm, a storm that came up. It was huge. And um, if you notice, Marianne's wearing traditional clothes. She wore traditional clothes the the, the whole trip. Where are they? Are yeah. I think when in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And actually, I think um, we were treated like. I think if we're visiting a country, that's that's the way you should. And we also spoke a little Bangla. There was like some words that we picked up, and it was. Um, People were very pleased that we made an effort well, to do that. that. They loved it, yeah. And and then actually, when we went to the conference down in Kushtia, um, we spoke at the conference like um, for people with intellectual disabilities. We met some parent groups, and um, I was actually presented with two traditional outfits that oh, wow. one of the women who, with special needs made for me, and it was a beautiful gift. It was very nice. Now, when they asked you where you're from, and you said. Uh, Boston. No, no, no. We didn't get to the Boston. Really? Yeah, no, United I, States. Really. We were, United America. 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 They say America. I was, yeah, was going to so. say, I remember being in... Uh, but they'd say they had a cousin in Texas. They did. Do we I know him? But I he remember works in being bank. in Indonesia, yeah. Yeah. And, they, and they said, where are you from? I said, Boston. Yeah. They say, Celtics, Celtics. Oh. <laughs> they all knew the Celtics. Oh. And I always find different countries. Red Sox, they do. Yeah. They know yeah. our sports teams. Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, I, I presented at the law school in, in the University of Dhaka. The, 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 the part of this story, though, I presented the law school. You can see his name way over there to yeah, the right. The Disability law. And so practice. I presented on the, on the, I took the picture because my name was in I actually took that picture. <laughs> but I, when I presented, I'm up there presenting. The, in, the law school runs from, you're, typically a law student is right after high school, so they run from about 18 to about 22. Okay. So I'm out there, and probably a third of the audience was women, and I'm, the women were separated from the guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm out there talking, and I'm looking out at the guys, and Marianne's sitting on the, not on the stage, she's sitting on the side. I'm looking out there, and all these guys have their cell phones. Nobody cared about Tom. Taking pictures of Marianne. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, you know, what can there I you say? go. Yeah, well, so, uh, I have to tell you. I have heard from two of them. The trip, yeah. the trip sounds fabulous. Yeah. Um, and I sincerely hope you will come back and join us another time with Travels with Jack and share with us another one of your trips. We'd love to. Because it's just great to hear you know, such an interesting trip, and uh, it just is, is exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see you both so involved in helping these people with disabilities globally. <laughs> You're a global ambassador. Yeah, it was awesome. And remind them you're from Massachusetts. I'll so tell them Boston next time. Please do.